Welcome to EasyClear, your one-stop software solution. Our goal is to uniform the supply chain along all modalities into one platform. This is inclusive of Transnet, Customs Services and IATA, along with cross-border and transit into upper African countries. We offer system as a service that allow easy-to-use transitions between the forwarding, RCG, clearance, invoicing with disbursements, reporting and bulk interactions. Follow me into the agent industry with your host, Devin Few. On day four, where we'll be covering the exports vouch of correction module, inclusive of a tutorial on how our CSV import works into the tariff line. So shall we get started? Right, so for those of you who are new to EasyClear web environment, the website is very straightforward. It's easyclearx.co.za. Another way that you can also access the website is also from our easyclear.co.za, where you can load through to the homepage of EasyClear, discover all our ins and outs in regards to the EasyClear company. But if you also utilize the login for our EasyClear website, it will take you directly through to easyclearx.co.za to log on to the application as well for those of you who didn't were not aware. Right, so I'm just going to log on. Now, these details I'm putting in here, EasyClear will give them to you by logging onto your computer and putting them in, asking the browser to remember the username and password. Please take note, we do not share this password out unless it's managerial asking for the username and password here. All right, so I'll just log in there. Just do let me know if there's any stutter or issues with communication, as I'm aware there might be a little bit of a lag in regards to the internet. So do let me know if there's a problem. I'll try and make a plan for that. All right, then the second screen, for most of you who use the legacy application moving over to web, or most of you who are already familiar with this, this is the first screen that you will see once we log on to EasyClear every time you reopen the application or the website. So then you'll choose your company name, you choose your department. So if you've got air freight imports, air freight exports, please make sure you log into the correct department as per your setup and business requirements. And then obviously choosing your name. All right. The secondary scenario, you can get the browser to remember your login detail as well. You'll still have to hit the drop down. And then when you hit press over here and hit login, the browser will just ask you to remember that username and password as well. But just change the name to your name and not the company name. Otherwise, you override it and you'll have to phone us to help you log back in. On my browser, I've specifically told it to remember no passwords ever. So you'll note that it doesn't ask me to remember the password. But if you do find that that password setting is not coming up, you can either communicate with your RT or phone EasyClear as we can just go through your browser settings. And if they're not administrative or RT controlled, we can therefore change them or we'll just need to reach out to your RT department. Alrighty, so we're just jumping straight through to the CSV option first. So I'll take us through exports momentarily, but I did promise in the last session I'd give you guys a CSV tutorial as to if you've already framed a file or registered a file. Now for me, I've just prepared a file called test CSV over here by copying the test ERG file accordingly and making changes to the master and house detail only, and obviously any truck and trailer, or in this case, C freight detail changes. I move over. Now at this point, for importing lines from an Excel document for the tariff lines, when I'm doing testing before I'm 100% certain that my lines are correct, then I can come back and capture the supplier's invoice. But you're more than welcome to do it in any order. Capture the supplier's invoice first, and then import the tariff lines. I just prefer to import the tariff lines first and then finalize the supplier's invoice, because I might want to delete the tariff lines and try again, depending on what circumstances come up. So I'll press the frame button without capturing the supplier's invoice. And immediately off the bat, I don't choose anything on the tariff line screen. I go straight to the import CSV. Now import CSV has multiple options where you can upload multiple different templates. Please reach out to EasyClear to assist you with these templates. The due reason for that is, and I will show you on screen a template that I've built over here. If I had to open that, 
and review the template, more than likely you're not going to be able to create this template by yourself due to the fact that the field names are very unique to EasyClear. So if you ever want to build a template and tell me that your FOB value is sitting in column A, your actual price is sitting in column B, and your tariff code is sitting in column C, as long as I can get a sample of that, then I can build your template. And 99% of the time we do ask you, uh, frame line number one, show us on a screenshot how you would frame line number one so that we can hard code certain things like the duty type for this template will always be ELG. And then the CPC code will hard, be hard coded to 6000. Likewise with the selection of the trade agreement for general duty, the pay VAT online, yes or no. For an ELG, I'm just going to change that to no. Is there a new induced indicator? Well, not required for exports, so that can actually come out. And then to be coded is also hard coded as one or two. All right, so I'm just going to save that. Now, every field that you see on the tariff line screen can be automated or come from the Excel documents as well. So I'll just show you a prime example of my Excel document. Now, normally we do ask you that at least column A cannot be blank. So if it is blank, populate it with numbers like one, two, three, and four, for instance. My CSV documents over here, column A is referring to a product code. So if on my CSV template, I had a product library that resolves the tariff code, you can also import that via the product code. Next, if I look at the template and match it over to the CSV documents itself, I can see the column B will come from row number two, and that's specifically asking me for stat one. So if you give us your Excel documents with headings, so we can create the template in accordance to those headings, and then just hard code the other information like the duty type and CPC code and trade agreement, as well as to be coded one or two, that will be first primes. And your CSV template can come in, or your CSV document can come in any order, as long as the template corresponds to that order as well. All right, then we can see column three is stat two, if there is a stat two, and then um, stat number three we're not referring to, as on the left hand side it's blank. Then we look for row number four is your inputs, your FOB value and the actual price. And then I see it's a repeat of the FOB and value and actual price in column E. So on that one, FOB and actual price will come from column D. And then your country of origin will come from row six, which relates to column F. Alrighty. Now on my template, I'm not specifying any product library name or use product library. That would be an additional field here. So I'm just going to show you what happens if you attempted to use the product library, but without a valid uh, tariff code or product library linked to the template itself. So very first thing, the template gets built. We'll press the plus button in EasyClear system. Choose the file in accordance. So we'll go over to where the file is, CSV sample, ELG text, and then I can just give it a name such as ELG tests webinar. So as you can see, you can give it any type of name you like. More than likely, we'll say ELG 6000 for general DC, and then leave the template name like that. So when you choose your template, you know exactly which templates you're going to use by the, uh, resolving the name of the template accordingly. So I'll press add. If you want to delete a template that has been mistakenly added, you can select it and administrative users should be able to delete it. Once you've chosen your template and EasyClear has helped you build that, it will forever and always be in the system and we can modify it if needs be. So I'm going to choose, choose the file thereafter, elg.csv. Please make sure your document's always CSV. And if you had to right click on a CSV and click on edit, or open with notepad, a CSV document, oh, wrong one, a CSV document must always be comma delimited for EasyClear to understand it. 
So some computers regional settings to split column A versus column B, it's separated by a comma. Some computers regional settings have a semicolon, and when the EasyClear system tries to import that, it's not going to recognize the difference between column A and column B because of the semicolon. So if you do find that's an issue, please do give us a call. We can help you change your regional settings to match. Right. Okay, so once I've chosen the documents, if we are using a product library and it's got associated rebate schedule three and four or five and six to it, we can tick the box and that'll pull, pull it through from the library, or you can hard code it on your CSV documents. And we can also import it from there. Using the pro rata KG for stat one. So say for instance, the tariff code did call for kilograms, but on your tariff lines for the Excel documents, you only have a number of pieces, but no kilograms. EasyClear can pro rata the weight. So say for instance, your full entries value is 100, line num and your mass is 150. Then we take the calculation to pro rata the weight will be the line amount, the line FOB value, divided by the full supplier's invoice value. So you can even click it at this time because we will be able to calculate the full supplier's invoice value even though I have not captured the supplier's invoice, it gets the FOB values from the Excel document to importing. Once it's done, that will take the FOB value from the line. And I'm just going to write this down just to make it a little bit more interesting. All right, so what it will do is we'll take the FOB value from the line, let's call that 100. Then the full supplier's invoice would be, let's make it a thousand. So in this case, to pro rata the weights and weights, we'll make it 10. So we'll say 100 divided by a thousand should equal 0.1. One zero, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just confirm that on a calculator. I might be missing a zero. Hundred divided by a thousand. Yeah, zero point one zero. And then it will be zero point one zero times by the weight to get the proportional value of that line as to the total mass of the registration screen. So this line's total kilograms will be one kilogram. Zero point one times ten is one kilogram, just to validate that. And that is the calculation that EasyClear will take in order for the tick box where it says pro rata the weight. If the weight is available on the suppliers, um, on the tariff lines that you're importing, then it will ignore the pro rata and import the line detail that you got for the kilogram, validating it does have a decimal value. All right, so from that, I'm just going to import. This one is going to import with errors on purpose. Just to show you what happens when I don't have a product library linked to the import situation. So I can click on the orange button or just refresh the screen. And then this pop up will come up saying imported with errors. I can view that, which therefore will download a text document. Just double check your pop up blocks are allowed. So I tested this on a different browser. So now we want to see what that error was. The best way to do so is we can see the tariff lines that got imported less than a couple of seconds, but accordingly the error must be the 029 slash 0015 is not a valid tariff heading, let alone it's not linked to a product library either, so it's not putting anything through. So to reset my CSV import, I can just go back to the supplier's invoice that's potentially created delete the supplier's invoice, move back over, and I can see all my tariff lines are also deleted. All right, so I bet, believe the best bet is, let's locate a valid tariff heading. And on that valid tariff heading, obviously you've done your tariff determination for each line according to the commercial invoice. Then you just go back over to your CSV document and insert that correct tariff heading accordingly. So if the top four lines are the first tariff heading, then we can go ahead and 
determine what our next tariff heading will be. Let's use 660191. And you'll notice when I'm doing this, I don't insert any full stops. I don't insert the check digit. I insert the full length of the tariff heading as it would be inserted manually on EasyClear. All right, so we can just close that again. Save the Excel document. And even with the Excel document open, I'm just going to go back to import CSV. We got the ELG scenario that we created for this. We're not going to pro rata the anything. We've got stat one. So I'll import the data. Oh, you've got to choose your file first. Select the document you're importing, template and Excel document. Then when I press the right arrow, you can immediately see a pop-up came up. And this time it says importing CSV, hit a refresh, but import CSV without any errors confirms that all the lines have successfully downloaded. And in accordance to that, I can see I've already got eight lines. Now, a beautiful test when you're doing something like this is if you got an entry that's more than, say, for instance, three, four hundred lines in length, as to how long it would take to put that information in Excel, import it via CSV in comparison to capturing each line one by one. So if the import CSV isn't available on your system, you can ask us to activate it, but then do make certain you've at least got sample data to send to us so that we can go ahead and create the templates for you, because without the accurate template, this whole process is not going to work. So I've got over 330 lines over here, most commonly the same tariff heading. I'm just going to press save on that, close it, delete the supplier's invoice, that'll get rid of the tariff lines again. Go back over to my tariff line imports, press the CSV, and you can see you can do this multiple times just to alleviate any issues with the file or any alterations you would like to make. And this can be done on the VOC process as well. Cool, so if I'm importing over 300 lines, we can press the orange button, it's already at 50%. There's my 100%. So the program managed to import the 300 lines in less than a minute instead of the normal half an hour capturing of set so many lines there. Once that's all done, I can see my running totals is zero. I'm happy with my tariff line selections. If I do have alternative trade agreements, I can just go to those specific lines, update them to SADC or EU, whatever the case may be. And specific to this one being an ELG, where I should have had an EIG, I can see the origin was China. So there's a mistake on the CSV document where I'd actually have to go back and amend that CSV document to rather be ZA, as that's where the goods would have come from, from an ELG, or in this case, amend the templates from ELG to EIG. But if you had made the mistake here, you'd have to go to each line and manually update it. But that's why we prefer just going back fixing the template, fixing the lines, re-import the lines, and that solves the problem. Instead of going through each and every single one of these lines, which might take you 20, 30 minutes um, plus. Alrighty, so yeah, if there's anybody who would like to use the CSV function, rather just send us an email, send us an example of the data you would like to import, and then we can assist you in regards to creating the template, and also just double check to send us a screenshot of how you would register the first line so that we can hard code the information such as due to type and CPC code manually in the template. And if there's an issue in between the process, we can always go into the template itself and update such as the ERG to be ELG from our side with obviously communication from you. Right. If there's any further questions on the CSV documentation, I'll take you through it again straight after the meeting. For now, let's divulge into the VOC portion. So there's two types of voucher of correction for exports. One is a trader initiated VOC, and one it would be a customs initiated VOC. So if I go back to my original entry, uh, test Devon ERG, I can look at the EDI send receive screen, Click on the history or see the latest description under the print menu, 
and double check there that it either says release and my clients told me in a client's instruction that either the flight number is changing or the ETA date might be changing. Any of the details might be changing. And then you go ahead and you make the changes, submit to customs on the VOC as an agent initiated VOC. If customs had to send you a status 26 amendment notification, then there would be a customs initiated VOC where customs would only accept that VOC if you insert the VOC decision. The acknowledgement indicator rejection is normally because the VOC decision hasn't been inserted or alternatively your case number. They'll definitely work hand in hand and I'll show you where to put that on the screen. So from here, if we portray this as an amendment notification status 26 or even status 31. Status 31 means I can draft my VOC, but customs will be looking for supporting documents of that draft Confirm it as a status 26 before I'm allowed to submit. If it's in a status 31, just remember any VOC is going to reject. It has to go to status 26 to comply. Right, so if we falsify and say this is an amendment notification at the moment, let's do this VOC as if it was customs asking us to do the change and they're asking for 1500 Rand penalty because my country of origin wasn't correct, for instance, as per the section 91. All right, so I like going over here and just seeing using the magnifying glass on the screen here, put in my file number, and that can also tell me, have I already maybe not created a VOC on the file as it will pop up here? I can see that I haven't. So it's always good to check, have you created the VOC first? You can either do it in the export VOC section here, or I can go home, clearing, export voucher of correction, insert my file number there and I can see no VOC has been created for this one. Now I'm going to press add a file. I'm going to search for my file. So even though it is in the list there, I personally prefer to search for it because I don't like to click on the wrong item. Uh, thinking I'm working on the right file. Meantime, I've misconstrued it to that uh, an additional file number. So I'll click on the arrow that will open it. And now the VOC has been created. You'll take note the VOC is now being created because it has an underscore VOC. And please, for those of you who do do this, I implore you, please don't continue to the next VOC file number until this VOC is successful with customs. You'll note with other service providers, they'll ask you to recreate a VOC if it gets rejected. Easy clear scenario is you don't proceed to the next VOC unless the existing VOC is resolved or EasyClear has given you instruction to proceed to the next VOC due to whatever technical reason. All right. So if we do go ahead and create another VOC on top of this one, a good way for us to define, are you working on the correct VOC? Because you might have gotten a rejection here saying that the MRN number being null doesn't match the previous MRN number of the original entry. The reason for that is because my previous entry is the first VOC and that one wasn't released by customs. So therefore the new VOC VOC is trying to pull the bill of entry details from the previous voucher correction where the bill of entry details do not exist because that VOC has not been successful with customs. And that's the only way the previous VOC is going to have bill of entry details, which is why you'll find when you resubmit the VOC VOC, you're going to have no bill of entry details on your entry and a good way to validate that is by looking at the EDI send and receive screen. Insert your file number only, excluding the underscore VOCs. Press in the search option, and you can already see my ERG, the first entry is released. I went and created this VOC, but there's no successful status with customs. Then I'm trying to work on this VOC VOC, which will always and forever fail because it can't retrieve the bill of entry details from an unsuccessful previous batch of correction. So please take that well in hand and well in note that you're not supposed to work in the next VOC without our instruction or at least a previous successful message. That is quite a common call that does come into EasyClear. So we can definitely divulge on that one a bit further if you want to phone through and um, make separate arrangements to allow the next VOC to go in order 
because uh, you might have a scenario where customs had liquidated the provisional payments, the penalty to themselves. So therefore you need to make the provisional payment a complete zero. And that will be the easy clear scenario where we will tell you use the additional VOC VOC. But just thinking about that right now, it's quite possible for us to maybe have a liquidation provisional payment scenario here. It just depends how many times that comes up in the near future, if it's actually legible or mandatory. Otherwise, we'll help you with a manual process to get to the next VOC, making that provisional payment zero. All right, so we don't need to work on this VOC VOC. There's no EDR message to customs. There's no attached debtors invoice. So I can go directly ahead and press the delete button because this VOC VOC should not exist. Okay, so we're going back over to the original VOC that we want to submit to customs. All right, so then the only thing that we're changing here will be the penalty. So I see that immediately the file's created. It's got a duplicate number in house and it's measuring it. If I leave it against itself, it's measuring it against quite a couple of different file numbers that have the same house number. So if I'm happy with that, I can just ignore the button and then press the arrow to the right. You'll notice at that point the information was already saved. I wasn't changing anything, so I could just press the right arrow instead of trying to press save again. If you had made changes, please make certain to save it so the ignore button disappears completely, confirming the item is saved. All right, then we'll move over from supplier's invoice to the tariff line. All right, before we make the changes that the amendment notification is looking for, for instance, I just want to show you the VOC changes that we've made to EasyClear. Now, in regards to line one and line two, those existed on the original entry. So thus, we do not have a delete button, but we do have a cancel line button. If you are doing a VOC like an XE out of bond, um, customs don't allow line one to be canceled ever. So if you are canceling line one, you may as well follow the process of canceling the entire bill of entry instead. But if you have any other type of entry, then by all means, you can click on cancel line. So if I am canceling the line here, that will immediately set that line to zero. If I go ahead and press save now, I'll see a bunch of errors, but now line number one is going to land up on my EDR message because I press save. The very last thing what you do when you're canceling a line is press cancel. That's the first and last thing you do. Please don't press save again. You'll probably get a rejection that customs is missing the information of line number one as certain items can't be zero. So if you are canceling a line, that's the only button you press and you submit to customs. If you mistakenly canceled the line and you want to reinstate it, we now have the blue button that takes the line information from the original entry and reverts that back, putting your FOB value back because you accidentally canceled the line. Or even further, if I update the amount to 60, for instance, I hit a save on that and I realize, oh, I didn't mean to change that line, I can revert that back as well and it will change back to how the original entry was. All right, because lines one and two were on the original entry, I can now go ahead and add line number three if that was my tentative change with customs. What was the FOB value B? the kilograms, and then to be coded one or two, and save. So you'll now see line one and line two have the normal information, but now line number three is the only line that should allow you to delete it and the reason being for this is because it did not exist on the original entry. So that's the only additional line here that if I add it now, it's only been added now, so the system allows you to delete it. But if the other two lines existed on the original entry, then the option to delete those lines should not be available. And yeah, you can only cancel a line. So in order to cancel a line, when you print your worksheets, the line will still reflect. But when you do your SAD 500 and EDR message, that line won't be on the SAD 500 and it will not be in the EDR message. Alrighty. So now let's go back to the scenario as to say the origin was mistaken, that that should have been, instead of US, that was coming from China. 
and each time I press tab on the tariff code, the tariff book will pop up. So if you're just changing China, you can immediately use your mouse and press save. Otherwise, if you tab through, the tariff book's going to open again and redo your selection. So I'm just going to press CN and press save again, as that's the only changes I'm making. Now Customs have also run a penalty asking me for provisional payments of 1,500. So I can scroll down on the file, locate the item for provisional payments, penalty, insert my 1,500, scroll to the top of the page or slightly up so as the floating save button does follow you, you can press the save option. And that'll be the additional 1,500 that we're paying on an export VOC. And I have seen a couple of users or agents actually having to pay penalties on exports through the system, which makes the payment code on exports finally be a, a cash type entry as well. But thankfully, there's no duty in VAT, so we can bypass that. All right, my changes have been made. This is the very first time I'm working on this VOC. It didn't exist prior to the 10 minutes ago. So I don't need to click on the recalculate button because when I click on the worksheet and what type of worksheet I'm printing, be it standard, the compact worksheet or the detailed one where I can print that in Excel, I personally prefer the standard. I'll hit the print option and because it's the first time generating it, then at least I don't have to press the recalculate and there's a sample of my ELG customs worksheet with the customs value. I'll go back over now that the worksheet's been done, go to the SAD 500. And then the very first thing I'll do here is just go through my information, confirm everything's right, my marks and numbers. My financial information has pulled through from the original en entry, so I'm very happy with that. So if I'm marking this off as first round test, I chose Nedbank in association to that, even though that's wrong, customs still approved it. So reason for VAT of correction, amending country of origin only. My spelling can be right. <laughs> so amending country of origin only. And now as per stated, the VOC decision is required. And the question is, why is this? The VOC decision is required when customs send you a status 26. The status 26 might even be an embargo release for C freight, which will be option three as for a 5,000 Rand. So if I had done an, an embargo request with customs, they would say select option three. Now, please remember an embargo release normally for imports, but the import and export screen work exactly the same. So if customs ever told you to choose option three, none is fresca, zero, one is accepted, two is conditionally accepted with dispute taxes but on not on penalties and then conditionally accepted with dispute but requires release sureties to be lodged or you rejecting a uh, rejected abandoning the goods altogether all right so we're going to push this one through as accepted the rest of the information on exports calculate duties for over entry i never touch that because it's an export entry there won't be duties same thing with vat there's no need to do a refund indicator on exports. I'm paying customs the 1500, but I will never see that money back, not unless I lodge a manual dispute and a manual uh, refund jacket. Once this is all done, then we can save it. And now we want to EDI this to customs. So we'll go and copy our case number from the original file, and it's always going to be a thumb roll. If you're putting in your amendment notification indicator, your VOC decision, please make certain you insert your case number before you press the create button. Uh, otherwise, customs will reject it saying the case number is mandatory and vice versa. If you put in the case but not the VOC decision, customs will say the VOC decision is mandatory. But you and I both know that the previous entry to this is purely release. So there's no need for a status 26 scenario. So we take out the case number and we also remove the VOC decision as that is not required in this scenario. Once I'm happy with all the information necessary over here, I know it's a exports C freight type entry, so I can print my DA50 uh, SED 507 with that. If I did have any 
transfer type entries, RRT or RRB, I'd print my 502, but for the ERG, there's no need for that. Or any bonded entries, like an XE type entry, I'd tick my 505, but for your export of imported goods, yeah, it's not really a bonded entry, so I don't need to print that in addition to it. Once I hit the Save button, I can use the OK button, the picture over here, to print this. And then you'll see your SED or your DA504 immediately downloads to your computer, showing you the necessary changes for line one and line two. In this case, we just, just changed US to a CN. So now that I'm happy with my changes, there's no VOC decision, so no case number, I can press the Create button. I see my EDI has now been created. If there was an issue with that, I can also see that like if I change my N1 to N2, press the save or take it out completely, press the save, and then try and recreate the message, there's two type of issues right now. The system already sees a pending EDI already exists, and the next issue is going to be the valuation code is mandatory. So I'm going to go to e-commerce, EDI. Uh, fortunately, the system didn't let me recalculate or anything like that because there's already a pending upload. You don't want to create two and create a double declaration. So I'm going to delete that. Only if it's on pending upload can you delete it. Then I'll go back into the system, hit the Create button, and I see that it did bypass the valuation code. So I'm going to view in the EDI message here. Hmm. Valuation code on this one completely got bypassed. That is not good. Uh, we'll sort that out. Oh, yes, the validations on the test system are set to half, so it won't validate that. But if it is checking that on your system, please confirm. Right, so I am happy that it is there. We can also switch the validations off like you can see on our system, but you'll take notes probably on your agent's profile. By default, 99% have the full validations ticked, so it will always validate the code N1. If you are noting the code N1 is there, but it's still giving the, you the error message saying uh, valuation code is missing, that's purely because on your supplier's default, so I've just gone back to the registration screen. My supplier in this case is the exporter. They're supplying the goods to the overseas, so I'll press the plus button there. Hit the blue button. It's taken me to client maintenance. I'll scroll down just slightly, ever so slightly, and I can see there that I've got exporter defaults and also supplier defaults. So the supplier defaults is the only place where the VDN number is inserted into the entire system. So it'll definitely be off the consignee due to the system's tick boxes and setup. So whether you're on imports or exports, it's either supplier or consignee. So then we can go to suppliers defaults, insert the VDN number, hit the save button there, so whenever I'm creating my EDR message from the SAD 500 screen, it's not going to tell me N1's missing because it has been added to the client, or in this case, the consignee as a default being the relationship code. All right, I did note the EDR message has been created. One more time, I'm going to delete this EDR message as to the fact that I would like to show you the validations within the EasyClear system. So say, for instance, I had to change the voyage, voyage number from a T to an S as well, hit the Save button, and now I'm just going to attempt to create it, look at the SAD 500, ignore messages first, save. Messages have disappeared, so no further errors. Then I'm going to try and attempt to go directly to my SAD 500, but the system won't allow you because it's telling you you've made changes. You've got to recalculate your worksheet before you can proceed. So we'll change this back to a T so that customs don't get confused as to what we're changing versus what additionally we're changing that's not on our VOC reason. Hit the Save button. Because there's changes, it will ask you for the Ignore button again, purely and solely because there's changes on the screen already. And if I attempt to go to the SAD 500 screen again, 
it's already too late. There's been changes on the file, so it will ask you, please recalculate the worksheet. So it's a good safety mechanism in the system. And also at the same time, it won't allow you to recalculate the worksheet if there's a pending upload already in the system. So we do halt you at that point as well. So now that I've recalculated my worksheet, my SED500 technically got deleted, or in this case, the DA504, hence why my VOC reason also got deleted. I'm ending country of origin only. I like to put in the only sign as if you're writing out a check. Okay, so there's no VOC decision for this trader initiated VOC. I'm not cancelling a provisional payment, so I'm not I'm paying customs a PP. Or the secondary option here is cancel the PP minus rebate. So you'll cancel the provisional payment, but whatever's rebated or partially rebated, it doesn't affect that amount. So obviously those two items will not really affect the export scenario as penalties should be the only thing you pay on exports as far as I'm aware. Cool, so I'm happy with everything. I'm just going to hit the save button, preview the document, and this time I'm happy, so I'll press create. Go to the e-commerce button. You'll note the SAD screen is the only one that has an e-commerce button. The rest of the screens follow these three drop-down lines over here to get to the same place for the EDR send receive or other shortcuts accordingly. I see my pending upload is here, and because I changed country of origin, once I sync this off to customs, just want to confirm that's a test message. Yeah. Once I sync this off to customs, then I'll be able to validate and confirm uh, whether it's going to go to query docs for state of study 13 or not. So I was just reading over this message here. The electronic airwebbles that we do communicate to with Champ and the airlines saving you $50 instead of cutting a Weibull manually. So if you want to save the money, get in touch with us. We can sign you up with Champ and you can actually send e -airables. But the reason why this one's only failing is because that website is no longer valid. So let's just remove it from our test environment. So once I press the sync button again, you'll see there I've gone through amendment granted. So customs let me make the necessary changes without going to status 33, uh, status 13. So if I had a status 13 query docs, then I can see, ah, there might be a case number that customs would have given to you. So I'm just inserting a case number manually, and then I can go ahead and choose my supporting documents, or drops you down to the bottom of the screen, where you can select your document type. It's gonna randomly choose this text file, should technically be a PDF type document. Only PDF type documents can be selected to be uploaded to customs. I'm just using the first file I found as an example. Once you build up your list here of supporting documents to customs, you can click on send and each document individually cannot be bigger than two megabytes in size. If I'm mistakenly attached a document I don't want to send to customs, I can just click it and remove from list as I'm not going to send this as that will go to the Dwell and Cliff office as a live scenario, which I don't want either. Right, so everything seems to be in order there. We got our amendment granted. So now I can go ahead, click print my paperless release by clicking on the print option. I can see my paperless release is downloaded. My SAD, my DA504 document, I'm only going to go back and print that document now because the fact that I've got a successful status with customs means that if I reopen that document, I'm now going to have bill of entry details on the far right hand corner. And that's the best time to print it because your driver can definitely use that to get across the border. For each document that you preview within the system, you can go back to the registration screen, click on the e-filing, or click on the paper clip and you can attach additional documents to the EasyClear. I'm going to just attach the ERG text so I can drag and drop from there. So if you're trying to drag and drop emails, please remember in regards to the email system, rather just drag it, drop it into a folder on your computer before you drag and drop into EasyClear itself. What other document type is it? 
and then you can click upload. Once it's uploaded to the system, you can click on view attachments or alternatively, as mentioned before, easy filing from the drop down list here. Then you'll note even the SAD 500 that I just previewed is already on the archive for the paper trail. I can press this blue button on the right hand side and download it. And I've re-downloaded the same SAD document or I can download the mail that I'm looking for. And based on that one, if I don't want it in the system, only administrative users can delete that. As for everybody else, the red tick box or the red box cross here is definitely not visible to non-administrative users. All right, so it's a nice place to keep documents against the file in the system. So if you're ever using an archive process uh, that puts your documents in a box in a warehouse, that you struggle to locate, maybe just keep the documents attached to EasyClear as that'll be a quick and easy find. Alrighty, and then yeah, that concludes the EasyClear voucher correction for exports. Thank you, ladies and gents, for joining.